Good evening, Ohana. We are here again, and I trust that you've had a great day. It's our healing service, so I've been praying for a lot of you who sent in requests, but I want you to prepare your heart. I want you to expect something good to happen to you. I want you to have a faith picture like how you want to be if you're not doing well. If you're sick in bed, see yourself sitting up or running around, or going fishing, a real faith picture, okay? We're going to start with prayer, and then we're going to sing happy birthday to Jill Apollo, but let's pray. Father, we thank you for this evening. We thank you that you've made provisions for our body, soul, and spirit. And Lord, tonight as we come with our request, we know that in the name of Jesus, we can come to your very throne room, and you've given us provisions and promises that you will keep. And so, Lord, we pray for those who are undergoing some treatments like Delisai. We thank you, Lord, for strengthening her and healing her. We thank you for being with Wayne as he continues to recuperate. We're so glad, Lord, that you're there with them. We thank you, Father, for encouraging and touching Pastor David De La Cruz. We ask, Lord that even where they are now, they will feel the presence of your Holy Spirit with them. We pray for our sister Sylvia, Lord. We ask that you take away the pains that she's been having. And Lord, we know that you're there to help this person who's in the hospital that perhaps may be undergoing an operation who wanted to remain anonymous, but you know who he is. And we ask, Lord, for your mercy and grace. We ask that the doctors and nurses will do exactly what is right to bring him healing. Stop the bleeding, Lord, and give him your peace. And Lord, we pray for the women who've sent in their requests. We pray for peace for them. We pray for power over addictions that they might still be struggling with. And we know, Lord, that your word will encourage them. We pray for Moki, for his situation, for his health, and for his healing. We thank you, Father, because we know that you're here and you're able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or even think. So empty us of ourselves, Lord. May the Holy Spirit minister to people who are hungry. Prepare the hearts, Lord, to receive what you want to speak to them. In Jesus' name, amen. We're always happy to celebrate a birthday, and our dear Joe Apollo is celebrating one today. I hope Eleanor and the family uh, gave him a good birthday party because when she and I celebrate, we have the same birthday, we went to Cafe Ole, and their family, their beautiful family was there. And so anyway, Joe, here it is, and I've got a good singer to help me, so I don't have to sing a solo. James? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Joe. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. We love you. We do. We love you. We do. Happy birthday. God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Amen, and many, many, many more. You both are such a blessing, and we pray that God will give you the desires of your heart, Joe, on your birthday. Tonight is healing service, and I'd like for us to turn to Matthew chapter 4, and we're going to talk about Jesus the healer. We said we're going through the life of Jesus in our discipleship class and this kind of follows his temptation, his baptism and his temptation, and he's beginning to move into his ministry. He was 30 years old, a time when the Jewish man was considered to be mature and, you know, a real, like, have status in the community. All right, so Jesus is moving out in his ministry, and we're going to learn about it, and I'm going to teach you that Jesus wants us to carry on what he did. You know, somebody, one time a pastor said, he, his church didn't teach on divine healing, and he says, you know, Barbara, can you give me some scriptures? You know, is it really true that we can heal the sick? And is it really true, this is from a pastor, uh, that, you know, God will hear our prayers when we pray for the sick? 
And I thought quickly, and I said, you know, in Philippians 4, it says, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory, right? So if you're sick, what do you need? You need healing. So that's a good healing scripture. But there are other scriptures that will tell us how each one of us, you know, you don't have to be a healing evangelist. Oh, they'll have a big work to do if they got to heal all the sick. But Jesus wants all of us to be filled with the Holy Spirit. So as we read the scriptures, I want you to walk more in the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Say, Lord, fill me with the Holy Spirit. After you get saved, you want the abundance of his spirit. I'm going to teach you maybe on Tuesday on how to walk in the spirit and pray in the spirit if you don't know already. It's such a very natural thing that all you have to do is yield yourself to Jesus. Okay, Matthew 4, verse 20, beginning from verse 23. It says, And Jesus went about all Galilee, that's the northern part of Israel where the Sea of Galilee is, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Remember, when we are born again, we are born again into his kingdom. We must be born again in order to be in his kingdom because his kingdom is a spiritual kingdom. It's not here anywhere on this earth yet, okay? But he's put us into his kingdom so although we walk in the flesh, we live on this earth like other human beings, because we've got that relationship with him and we can walk according to the spiritual laws that he has in his kingdom, when the doctor says, you got only three more weeks to live, according to what I see, you can appeal to the king of glory and live according to his kingdom principles concerning healing. And so we're going to learn. Some of you are very new and we're going to learn what his promises are so that we can use it and get the blessings of having the principles of his spiritual kingdom operate in this world for us. And he says he preached the gospel of the kingdom, healing all kinds of sicknesses and all kinds of diseases among the people. Then the fame went throughout all Syria and they brought to him all sick people who were afflicted with various diseases and torments and those who were demon possessed and epileptics and paralytics and he healed them. Now, you know, in this day when we've got a lot of good doctors and specialists and we can do a lot of amazing things, we might use Jesus as, as I hate to say it, but people use it as the last resort. Like, I tried this doctor, I tried that doctor, we tried this treatment, and I have some people come and say, we tried everything, nothing works, so can you pray for me? You know, because we take advantage of what we have. But just think in the days of Jesus, they didn't have the medical care, they did have doctors, but they didn't know, you know, what we know now. They even, it's, I think when Pasteur, Louis Pasteur, discovered about bacteria, we didn't know that diseases could be transmitted from one person to another. And so in those days, it was quite primitive. And so when somebody could heal the sick, you can imagine how interested and eager and desperate they were. And the scripture says they came from all over the place with all kinds of diseases. Now, sometimes even Christians in our mind, we categorize the easy diseases to get healed, but then there's some that are hard to get healed and so forth. Well, God is able to heal all. He can heal a headache. He can heal a toothache. He can heal insanity. He can heal... Uh, I have heard the um, testimony of Joel Osteen's sister. I had met the parents, and one time they came for a convention, and they gave the testimony of the sister who was born, and they said, she, the doctor said, 
you should put this child away in an institution because she will never recognize you. She didn't have any muscle tone, and you know she just was not aware of anything. And that's when they really sought for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They used to preach about salvation, but they were not taught that Jesus can heal. So they started learning, and then Lisa got healed. And they introduced her that night. She was a senior at R. Roberts University at that time. And she was an honor student. So God can heal even people, the doctors will say, would be just a vegetable. It's according to our faith. So let your faith be big. We've got a big God. Don't limit him. Don't say, well, I can trust him for my headache, but I don't know about this lump I've got behind my neck or, or my joints that are, you know, swollen. Nothing is impossible to God. Nothing is big or small. He has provided for all. Jesus healed all. And then I want you to turn to John 14, 12. Because there is a key. There's certain keys. But one important key is that we can pray like Jesus. In fact, you know, he said... In this 14th chapter, verse 12, he said, Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me. Now, you're all believers in Jesus. He's been your Savior. The works that I do, what works did he do? Well, all the people came with epilepsy and they were paralyzed and they had all kinds of diseases and he healed them. And so he says, all, he says, the works that I do, so all of these things, will he do also? Who is he? You and I, those of us who are believers in Jesus. And it says, greater works than these he will do because I go to my Father. So Jesus was telling them, even early in the ministry, watch what I do, believe as I do these things, and you see, let these miracles build your faith because one of these days I'm going back to my father but I'm going to send you my Holy Spirit and when my Holy Spirit comes upon you you're going to lay your hands on the sick and you will heal and even greater things you're going to do now theologians always like to argue so they said what does greater things mean does it mean more unusual kind of diseases or does it mean more in number, you know, Jesus was here only three and a half years, so maybe thousands instead of his hundreds. It doesn't matter. Greater things, greater things. Just leave it to the Lord. So never be intimidated by what somebody says. In fact, I prefer not to hear the details of your illness because sometimes when you tell me how long you had it and what the doctor said and all this kind of things, you know, it might block my faith. But if I don't know, one time in New Zealand, that's what happened. They brought, we were having wonderful miracles. I told you about the eardrum that was created. We had all kinds. In fact, uh, the second or third day that I was there, they brought me to my deacon's wife's father's hospital room because he was dying and I was really young in ministry that's why I know everybody can do it remember I prayed for the wrong ear and God healed the correct ear so he can use anybody I was just willing to be used and, and they took me to this dying man's room and I had never prayed for somebody that was dying and I really did not know what to do except he was like unconscious so I grabbed his hand and I started praying you know a simple prayer of healing and I, God allowed me to see this. I saw the power of God just move down my arms into that man and shook him and brought him back to life. You know, God can do that. I was just so simple and green, really. But he sees our faith and our willingness to do what he says. And so anyway, I want you to know that you can do it through the Holy Spirit. It's not you. It wasn't me. It was my obedience to the Holy Spirit. But he says, greater things than I have done, he will do if he's filled with the Holy Spirit after I go to my Father. So it says, and whatsoever in that 14th chapter, whatever you ask, 
What's the secret now? In my name, Jesus says. That will I do. This is why we need Jesus. People believe in all kinds of gods, and they're trying to do things in all kinds of gods, but Jesus legally paid for us to be saved from hell and healed so we can have a long, good life here. All right? So Jesus is telling us, when I went to the cross, and that will be our scripture I want you to memorize from Isaiah 53. I'm not going to have many scriptures, but that's one that I use all the time. And quote, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement, the beating for our peace was upon him. And by the stripes that he took, 39 stripes, he took, we are healed. We are made whole. That's powerful. But this is the secret. Because we are adopted into the family of God. When we say we are sons of God, Jesus is the only begotten son, but we are adopted into his family. And, of course, we're daughters, okay? Whatever you ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. That's why after every prayer we say, in the name of Jesus, amen. That is the signature. That is the seal of authority. That gives it the right to be heard because we go through the Father. Jesus made it legal when he died on the cross for us then to be healed and to heal the sick. And it says, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Anything in my name. And as you grow in the Lord, God's going to, Change your desires so that will be his desires. You're going to know his promises, and you're going to desire what is best for your relationship with him, and he will give you whatever you need. You're going to grow into this, but just trust God. But remember, use his name. So James is here to help me, and we're going to teach you a chorus. Now, I like to sing. Oh, I tell you what. I love to sing, but I don't have a nice voice, so I'm glad James is coming. But I get excited. You know, when I saw the program on Sunday, I couldn't believe I was that crazy. I was so excited to be in church. I was screaming, you know, but I was so happy. I like to be in the presence of God. But anyway, we're going to teach you this song. Uh, in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. Wherever we go, in the hospital room, Whatever, just say, in the name of Jesus, I go. You're not going to heal the sick, but you're going to use the authority Jesus has conferred on you to go and anoint the sick or heal the sick. So, James, lead us in that, and let's sing it a couple of times. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, demons will have to flee. For when we stand in the name of Jesus, tell me who can stand before us. When we stand in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, the men will have to be. For when we stand in the name of Jesus, tell me who can stand before us. When we stand in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. Okay, one thing good about Facebook, you can play the program over and over and you can learn that song. Amen. I hope you will do it because I use it all the time. I use it before I pray sometimes for the sick. Sometimes I use it after I pray for the sick. And now, I hope you realize, you know, some of you are new Christians, and maybe you used to take the name of Jesus in vain. And I went to Okinawa, where most of them were speaking Okinawan, except for the American servicemen. And I was walking down the street one day, and these Okinawan laborers on the street 
were talking and one swore and took the name of Jesus in vain. And I looked and I thought, he cannot speak English and he's swearing in Jesus' name. I was so mad. I don't know why people do that. I've been in other places, you know, that they use Jesus' name as a curse word. And if you ever have done that, you need to ask Jesus to forgive you because if you don't use his name and keep his name holy, it's not going to have power for you. And I speak to Christians, and this is how some Christians take the name of Jesus in vain especially the ones that want to pretend they're so holy, you know. Well, Jesus told me that we should do this. Oh, Jesus told me that you shouldn't do that. Well, if Jesus didn't really tell you, you are taking his name in vain, and he's not very happy, and you need to repent, okay? So let's get our plates clean. Let's ask him to forgive us if we've ever desecrated his holy name. Oh, and then he'll restore power in that name that whenever you say the name of Jesus, whenever you sing about the name of Jesus, there's going to be an anointing and peace and joy and holiness that's going to be around you. So we thank the Lord for forgiving us when we were ignorant, okay? And so we can ask anything in his name. Now, he may not give it to you tomorrow. Maybe he needs to work some things in you to be ready for what you're asking. But once you say it, if it's not a mean thing, you know, he's going to give it to you. If it's something you need, he, is prom he has promised to give it to you. So just wait on him. And in the waiting time, instead of moaning and groaning and wondering and doubting and I hope you don't cuss, you know, just praise him and say, Jesus it seems like you're so slow, but I want you to know that I'm still trusting you. I'm still expecting you to deliver. And if you keep thanking him, because you know the most powerful prayer, and that's why I want us to know God's word and his promises, is to pray the promises back to him. You know, it's like a parent-child relationship. If my dad promised me something, he may not do it right away, but I'll say, Dad, remember, you said that you're going to take us fishing this Saturday. Remember? And he will say, yes, I remember. But, you know, if he didn't promise, I can nag and nag and nag and nag, but he, doesn't, he didn't promise, so he, he's not obligated. But once he promised, he feels obligated, and thankfully my dad always, to the very best of his ability, fulfilled his promises to us so it's easy for me to trust in God when I see the promise of God that he's going to keep his promise maybe not right when I want it but I know that when he promised he's going to do that so whatever your need is and as we study the scriptures this is why you know at, from time to time I give you 10 verses on healing or on peace or whatever on topics so that when you have a need in that particular area, you're going to say, you know, God, in Psalm 103, you said if I will bless your name, that you will heal me of all my diseases. And you said, and you tell him back, and you just celebrate that. You said it, Lord, I know it's going to happen. You have to beg, heal me, you know, or fill my grocery cart with food. Or, you know, we don't have to beg him. We just say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You promised, and you're faithful to keep your promise. And then, of course, in that same passage that we read about using his name, he said, if you love me, keep my commandments. And that's the key. If you love Jesus, you're not going to read his commandments and study his commandments. You're going to do his commandments. Because the more you grow in the Lord, the more you're going to find out he's smarter than you are. That means if he says don't do it, he has a reason for you not to do it, even if you cannot understand the reason why right now. So just obey him like a child obeys the parents when they're young and they cannot understand. Just keep his commandments and you'll be safe and you'll be on the right track. And then he says, I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper 
that he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth. Remember, we don't want to be deceived. The Holy Spirit in you will rattle if you go toward deception or if there's somebody that's not right and trying to lead you astray. He says, the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and he will be in you. So open yourself to the Holy Spirit. Tell the Lord, with your help, Lord, to the very best of my ability, I'm going to change my ways and I'm going to do what you say, even when it's difficult, because the Holy Spirit in me will give me the strength and the ability to do it. All right, so memorize Isaiah 53, 5, if you will. And I want you, if you're uh, in a close proximity with your family, uh, maybe share whatever needs you need to pray for. And James is going to come and sing us another song as we go to prayer. But listen to the words and then quietly share. If you've got a pain somewhere, turn to somebody and say, could you agree with me? I've got a pain in my elbow or something like that. And during the prayer time at the end, you'll pray for one another and you'll be amazed at your prayers will help heal the sick. Amen. James. Thank you, Jesus. Um, I'll be singing um, He Touched Me. Um, I'll be doing it a cappella because um, the, the keys that I do usually do it, um, it's too high for me, so um, bear with me. Shackled by a heavy burden Neat the load of guilt and shame Then the hand of Jesus touched me and now I am no longer the same. He touched me, oh, he touched me. And oh, the joy that floods my soul. Something happened. And now I know he touched me and made me whole. Since I met this blessed Savior, since he cleansed and made me whole, I shall never cease to praise him. I'll shout it while eternity rolls. He touched me. Oh, he touched me. And oh, the joy that floods my soul. Something wonderful happened, and now I know he touched me and made me whole. And we thank you, our Heavenly Father, for your provision for us. Holy Spirit, fill the rooms where the people are. And I know some have some serious illnesses. Some have been sick a long time. But Lord, I know you're able to deliver tonight what they're expecting for. Holy Spirit, fill us. Pray in the Spirit, people. Just let your praise come from within you. Not from your mind, but from your spirit. Let your tongue speak the words of God in his language. He prays through you his perfect will, the Bible says, when we pray in the spirit. Hallelujah. 
Holy Spirit, we honor you. Heal each one. Heal each one. I see you going and touching each one, Lord. Touch them. Touch them. Set them free, Lord. Set them free, Lord. Touch their eyes. Touch their ears. Touch their lungs. Touch their throat. Holy one of God, we love you. We praise you, Jesus. In your name, we speak blessing and healing. In your powerful name, we say that you were wounded for our transgressions. You were bruised for our iniquities and the chastisement for our peace was upon you. And by the stripes that you bore, we are healed. We believe it. We receive it. In the name of Jesus, we will tell about it. We will declare it. We will celebrate it. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise and glory. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, amen. Just give Jesus a hand clap wherever you are. Let's celebrate. You may not even feel a little better, but it doesn't matter because by faith it is done and it's on the way. So keep celebrating, amen. Let's sing that in the name of Jesus as we close again, James, okay? In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we have humans who have to flee. For when we stand in the name of Jesus, tell me who can stand before us. When we stand in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. Amen. Let's give Jesus glory tonight. Have a blessed evening. Keep in the spirit of victory. Expect God to heal you even when you go to sleep. Have a good night's rest. And tomorrow we look forward to having a ladies' night. So we'll see you then. The men are invited to eavesdrop too. So we'll see you tomorrow night. God bless you and I love you. Bye.